Hello. Today we are going to talk about five reasons menopause causes dreaded weight gain. Oh my goodness. And some strategies to combat that. So being a woman in my mid fifties, I completely understand this entire strange thing that occurs to our bodies. Just like someone opened the door and let a stranger in, right? It's our own bodies. We're just not inhabiting the same creature that we were just a few months ago, years ago. <laughs> and so I really wanted to bring some highlights, some of the science that's, uh, you will help you understand why this hormonal shift that if you live long enough, you'll go through as a woman and what you can do to combat it. So first of all, let me pull up my notes here. So first of all, let's just talk a little bit about menopause. So in case you haven't heard, there's this thing called menopause. It's going to be happening to you at some point. Um, if you're a female and you live long enough, like I mentioned, it's a natural biological process, right? It's not a disease. It's just something that's going to happen. But there are things you can do about it. But we'll get there in a minute. It happens at the end of our reproductive years, right? It brings about a few different changes in the body. Uh, one of the most common and frustrating issues that so many women struggle with is waking. And understanding the underlying causes can really help us manage and mitigate the challenge. And so here are the five reasons why it's happening in the first place. Number one, I think you guys can probably guess, it's hormonal changes, right? The most significant factor that is contributing to weight gain during menopause is these hormonal shifts, right? So as women approach menopause, the levels of estrogen and progesterone will fluctuate and they'll come up and down and eventually they'll start a steady decline. And estrogen plays a really important role in metabolism and in particular body weight. So lower levels of estrogen can lead to an increase in fat storage, particularly around the abdomen, which is that visceral fat. Um, and that can also lead to decrease in muscle mass, which further slows your metabolism. Next is that decreased muscle mass, right? So muscle mass can naturally decline with age. Um, it's in a, something called sarcopenia. So if you're not being active in making sure that you may retain your muscle mass, if you're eating enough protein, you will suffer from sarcopenia. And this process accelerates during menopause due again to those hormonal shifts that we spoke to. You know, muscle burns more calories than fat tissue, even at rest. So therefore a decrease in your muscle mass will lead to a slower metabolism, making it easier to gain weight. So strength training and resistance training, which I'll get to in a minute, can be part of the solution. Next is something so many of you know, if you've been following me for a long time, I love to talk about is insulin sensitivity. So you'll get changes in insulin sensitivity, meaning you're going to become more insulin resistant. Um, and so menopause can absolutely affect that. So lower estrogens can lead uh, to this insulin resistance where the body's cells just become less responsive to insulin. Therefore, when you have higher blood sugars, this causes more increased body fat storage. Again, there's a whole thing I can talk about just on insulin resistance alone, but know that you will have some changes there just because of the fluctuation of your hormones, decreased muscle mass. Again, the more weight you, you gain, the more insulin resistance you become. So it's like this diabolical cycle you just can't get out of. Next, we'll also see increased appetite and cravings, right? So if you are a woman and if you've ever been pregnant or had a period, <laughs> you will notice some women get very different cravings during that time. I will tell you, I've had three pregnant, well, I've been pregnant four times. I did have a miscarriage, but I had three babies who are now 30, 28, and almost, he'll be 26 in October. Um, I had some wacky doodle cravings, right? Like cheesecake and pizzas and I know, that was long before my finding health. <laughs> I was healthy then, but yeah, finding my way where I am now. But just know that just, just to kind of think about pregnancy was hormonal shifts, menopause, there's some hormonal shifts. You will get some different changes in appetite and cravings. So again, there's also sometimes you're not sleeping well, you get more stressed out. If you're a stress eater, those emotions can drive appetite changes and cravings. So again, it just... It's one more thing added to the crazy wheel we call menopause. Um, but menopause can be different ladies. I'm just throwing this out there. But again, I wanted to speak to, it is perfectly normal. You're not crazy. If you start noticing it, I had some strange cravings for, you know, hmm, chocolate ice cream or whatever that might be. Again, 
we may find that we have those cravings for high calorie, sugary, and high fat foods, which are going to accelerate the weight gain even further. Next is lifestyle factors. So many of us in this age from, you know, I would say, so depending on the woman, late 30s, early 40s through, you know, mid to late 50s, early 60s, that is a wide range to be dealing with this perimenopause, menopausal shift. And so you're raising children, you're working full time, you're maybe doing both. Uh, lots of things could be going. You may be dealing with chronic disease. You may have had other weight gain from pregnancies and unable to lose it, right? So that can maybe lead to decreased physical activity, again, which will cause less muscle mass, will cause less metabolism, right? You're lowering your metabolism. You're going to gain weight. You'll have more difficulty keeping weight off if you do lose weight. You have sleep disturbances that change, right? So I will tell you, I follow everything I preach. I tell people eat a whole food plant-based diet. I tell people exercise every day. I tell people manage the stress. I tell people get the sleep that you need, get the sleep that you need, um, have good relationships. I feel I'm doing pretty well in all these, except when I hit menopause about eight months ago when my periods just stopped. I will tell you, and I eat soy every day. I had some serious hot flashes, not a lot of them, but it was, they were intense had a whole new have a whole new understanding and appreciation for my mom and my grandmother when they would just feel this rush of heat come on. It was like instant. I was like someone turned on the oven and didn't tell me about it. And anyway, but it was like three o'clock every single morning. I felt it coming before I actually had the hot flash. It was like this knocking on the door and then someone burst in and say, hey, here I am, hot flash. Anyway, that happens. That's sleep disturbance. So then it's hard to go back to sleep because you're sweating and then you're cold. Oh my Lord. So those are the things that can disturb your sleep. Plus you're more stressed because you don't know what's going on in your body. You become more forgetful. Sleep disturbances, one another thing. And then of course, stress, right? Because menopause, just in that you get the, again, the hormonal shifts, you might become more emotional, more irritated. I remember when, again, remember how I'm comparing menopause with <laughs> periods. My husband, God bless him, he would give me a hard time. He goes, is this your PMS time? And not that I was super mean. I mean, maybe he thought I was super mean. I try to be a nice person. I really do. Um, but he was like, I think this is this your hormonal time. And I was like, yeah, it's my PMS, Patrick Marbus syndrome. I thought it was my way to be funny. Anyway, I thought it was funny. You guys, maybe you won't think that's funny, but I thought it was funny. So Yes, you'll get more stressed. You're more likely to be a little bit more irritated. Well, because guess what? You're not sleeping well. You don't know what's going on with this body that you thought was your friend for the last 50 some odd years, half a century, but suddenly it's decided to be not your friend or at least someone you know. Now you feel like you're getting reacquainted with a whole nother person. Your brain's change, your emotions change, your body is changing. Yeah, that's crazy. So lots of things going on here and you get to gain weight. Woohoo! Um, so those are the things that can cause your weight gain. And so I know I'm making light of it, sort of, but I've only because I'm right there with you, sisters. So I'm just saying these things can happen. You're not crazy. There is some science to, to prove why these things are happening. But what are some strategies to improve it? So there's three things that I want you to focus on. Number one, let's do some strength training. There's going to be some things here, ladies, that will change when you're going to get more muscle mass, you're going to get more energy and you're going to sleep better. Just do two to three workouts per week. Start at 10 minutes if you want, 20 minutes, whatever works. Do body weight exercise. If Even if you can just stand back and do some push-ups against uh, your countertop or do some body squats, step up and out of a chair, some type of resistance training three times a week for, let's get started with 10, 20 minutes. That right there is going to shift things. More insulin sensitive, getting better sleep. It's improving your fitness level. It'll improve one, your metabolism, right? Right up the metabolism. And you will just feel better overall. Number two, optimize your diet. Yes, a whole food plant-based diet. Like I said, I've said many times before is one of the most powerful tools that I offer people. Um, but it is not a panacea, but it will absolutely help many other things. One, it will probably decrease inflammation, decrease many of the symptoms severity that you might be having, unless you're like me, who is lucky, 
who still had some interesting symptoms like joint discomfort in my hips, but that went away completely, which I'll get to later on how I've been dealing with all this um, and feeling back to my normal self, actually my younger normal self, which is really interesting. Um, but anyway, optimizing your diet, guys, fruits, veggies, beans, whole grains, nuts and seeds, making sure you're getting enough protein to feed those muscles that you're going to be doing resistance training, make sure they grow. And I have tons of videos all about protein. Just Google those. You can find them there. Next is sleep. <laughs> I almost feel sometimes sleep is more important than food because I know if I sleep better, I make better food choices and I'm a nicer person. And what do I mean by better sleep? Well, focus if the first thing you can do is make sure you try to at least be in a bedtime before 11, if you can, between 11 and four, be in your bed with, on your phone, set a regular bedtime, even better be like 10 to you know five or six, trying to get those seven to eight hours is ideal. And again, there's so many things you can do on sleep hygiene. I could spend weeks talking about sleep by itself, but just if you've been sacrificing your sleep for to watch Netflix or you're worrying about something, we'll get to that stress piece here in a second. That would be something I would start. I say, let's let's start with sleep. But also, if you eat better, you sleep better, so that it will compound upon each other. And if you exercise, you sleep better. So you see where I'm going here. The next thing is really, guys. I said three things, but I think stress is a big one. And I think the number one thing you can focus on to help with your stress is mindfulness practices. And what does it mean by mindfulness? It's just being aware and being grateful at the moment that you're in, right? So right now I'm being present with you. I am grateful for you for being here. I am grateful that I'm able to share things that hopefully will help you. And honestly, it is such a joy every day to, I, I pretend I'm talking to someone. I hope someone's listening. I'm talking to myself right now, but I'm hoping you're listening. Um, but yeah, it's, that is just that gratefulness piece will help decrease your stress, right? Breath awareness, taking a few deep breaths. It's called an observer effect. You can't be thinking about future tripping or past tripping if you're aware of your current breath and out, right? You become present, you come down. Remember, the, the only thing that you can be in control of is your inner state, right? Your emotional state at this moment. And so... If you do that, if you take care of what's going on on the inside mentally by being grateful, and if it's if it's hard, just look outside and find something pretty. See, I'm I'm thankful for that tree. I'm thankful for that flower. I'm thankful for that cloud. I'm thankful for the raindrop. I'm something. Just start that process. That little little simple shift in perspective starts the domino effect in your life, and you'll see decreased stress, more peace, less discontent. So many things start improving. And again, so many things I could talk about this subject, but I want to keep the video short because I also wanted to share, please, please, please consider registering and watching my free masterclass, Five Steps to Master Your Metabolism and Lose Weight. I also speak to the four biggest mistakes people make in their weight loss journey. Menopause is a big piece of this, man. Everything I speak about will fit the menopause piece here. So but it also helps cholesterol. My lipids change, by the way, with menopause, but they're better now. But I'm just I'm just throwing out there so many things about my free masterclass that will help you here in your menopause journey and weight loss journey. Yes, so please, I, I really hope. And if you don't think this is a good fit for you, could you share it with someone that you think might be helpful for? Um, again, I hope you found this helpful. I'm going to speak about menopause all week. And if you really want to even go in a deeper dive, um, you can register for the Healing Kitchen, which is at the drmarvis.com website. I'm doing a free masterclass with an ebook for my for my Healing Kitchen members only on the 30th of May. And again, only invitation is to my Healing Kitchen members. And we meet weekly every week with Brittany Girudi. And we have an in-depth workshop every single month. When you sign up, you also have access to all past workshops and every single ebook about osteoporosis, insulin resistance, uh, plant-based 101. We have all those recipes for almost a year now. So check it out, guys. It is well worth it. We're working on a private community. We're working on a course. So many cool things coming out of the Healing Kitchen. But first, please also consider checking, like I said, that free masterclass Five steps to master your metabolism and you will lose weight. You will lose weight. 
that's just how it works with the thousands of patients I've worked with. So as always, thank you for being with me. I appreciate you as always. Thank you so much for spending time with here. I know it's the only thing you can never get back is your time. So I truly value that. And I'm sending you joy, love, and peace as always and healing because we need that so much in our lives every single day. Love you all. Thank you for being here. And uh, again, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day.